Welcome to the chapter review of One Piece, chapter 860. I'm Smalls, and I'm here bringing this to you today. So, with the tea party starting, we finally get a good look at the guest list. And sadly, fan favorites like Crocodile and Jewelry Bonnie are at least nowhere to be seen for now. Probably not at all, but let's keep our fingers crossed. Love to see some surprised guests on the list. But, at the very least, let's get on to the plot. Peckham's is still in captivity by the Sun Pirates. Kind of. They, they, they leave him with food and drink, but they're hightailing it out of there to, you know, escape Big Mom because once she learns that Jinbei has gone against her, she will destroy them. Now, is that a given? Yes, because we actually get a little flashback telling us about, you know, back when Jinbei was going to spin that wheel. Well, not a flashback directly to it, but a flashback to Jinbei discussing his plans with Al Aladdin and the rest of the Sun Pirates, in which he goes into great detail of how much was at stake when he wanted to originally, I don't know, say leave Big Mom on good terms. There was no good terms, because apparently the numbers on the wheel didn't only signify the amount of years taken off, but how many people those years would be taken from. As for the specifics, doesn't really go too much detail, but at least adds on that Jinbei was not the only one being targeted, and that the Sun Pirates would, themselves would have to suffer if he had left the way he originally planned to. So, more into the mythos of the, you know, dead man wonder wheel, man like wheel. Like, that, that's some carnival corpse level shit right there. And for none of you guys who have ever seen Dead Man Wonderland, I'll make a manga recommendation of it at some point when I agreed to start that series. But, this is something unprecedented. As... Jinbei not only goes to show how much he cares about the Sun Pirates, but then immediately switches over to saying how much he would sacrifice for the Straw Hat Captain Luffy. Which goes back to saying that when people originally, you know, when back when he originally was going to spin the wheel, people theorized that if he didn't lose an arm, a leg, he would lose years off his life, and that he would end up dying sometime after the arc, or at some point due to the after effects of the wheel. Now, obviously, that's not going to happen. However, the words that he will put his life on the line for Luffy alone signify that Oda is going to do something big with Jinbei's character. Now, Jinbei came in big with the war, the Paramount War, or the War of the Best, whatever you want to call it. But when Jinbei goes out, he will go out big time. And we can tell this by the dialogue alone. Oda would not have put it in there for shits and giggles. So, Jinbei might still die before the end of the series. For you guys who were really hoping that your theory was right about Jinbei dying, good for you, you, sad you sadistic fucks. But nonetheless, Jinbei is still going to be joining us. Hopefully he doesn't die this arc. I hope I didn't jinx anything. Fingers crossed, people. And toes, too. Jokes aside, we finally get to go back to the Vin Smokes and see how they're doing. They're wondering where, you know, Reiju was the entire night. And she's mainly keeping quiet due to her, not pride, but her guilt over how much pain they've caused over the years. And the Vin Smoke boys are just being Vin Smoke boys. I didn't really pay too much attention to their dialogue, honestly. They're the victims. They're not the villains they were made out to be. And speaking of what they were made out to be, does anyone remember when their powers and shit were teased early on in the arc? Like, what was the point of that if they're not going to be used? Are they going to play a part in the escape from Whole Cake Island? Well, of course... I mean, sure, at the very moment, they are technically damsels in distress. But once the initial bullets miss, they will be just as formidable of allies as they would be enemies. So in the end, will their powers be seen in full fruit? Because we still don't know what the poison pink of Reiju even is, per se. 
or anything else of that nature. Like, what are the rest of their powers? Did Rage you eat a devil fruit? Did any of them eat devil fruits? Or are they just, you know, strong superhumans? We don't know. And can all of them use hockey like, like Sanji can? We don't really know. So, now we let's get into the emperors of the underworld. Now, these guys were a lot more specific and a little bit stereotypical than I thought, except for the big bird guy. Like, yeesh. actually, I'm not even sure what his real, you know, position as an emperor of the underworld. Big news, president of the World Economic Times. I, I guess he, you know, I don't even care. But God of Fortune, I'm guessing he's in charge of the black market, maybe casinos and shit. We got a mortician. We got storage. Eh, you know, big shit. But they are the last ones to arrive, and uh, I'm not pronouncing his name for shit. Let's call him Crazy Willy Wonka. Actually, wouldn't that just make him a regular Willy Wonka? Huh. Either way, Mr. Lick Lick makes a... Uh, Candy ele es elevator? No, escalator. Oh, God, I'm messing up my words. It makes a candy escalator, which the kids seem very happy to lick. Oh, that came out wrong. But either way, they're going up to the party, and there's only one other person in front of them. Or was. Jigra, the uh, organ broker or whatever. Yeah. Apparently, he missed one of Big Mom's parties. And Big Mom does not like when her parties are missed. So we do get to hear a little bit more about the fabled put a head in a box sh shit. Shtick? Shtick. Shtick that Big Mom has. He missed Big Mom's last tea party for his mother's funeral and got his sick dad's head in a box. That is darn right disturbing. But he's gonna join them. He got a jelly bean through the fucking forehead from our last commander, Katakuri, or as MS for some reason translate his name to Dogtooth. I'm gonna stick with Katakuri for now. I mean, Dogtooth sounds cool, but even the translator note doesn't really put it out there much. So, until, you know, Viz Media puts out their translation on Monday. I'm just going to keep going with Katakuri. I suggest... Actually, I'm not going to suggest anything. What do you guys like better? Katakuri or Dogtooth? I'll put it up in the polls above. Actually, please use the polls. I put them up to, you know, put some interaction with you guys. So come on, interact. But aside from that, not really much power shown, except for the fact that you can flick a jelly bean through a man's forehead. Jelly beans, that's not really what you think when you think of a weapon. Even though these guys have put biscuits and candy as weapons. And you know, juicing people. Which I'm going to skip later. I don't want to talk about that. That's nasty. <sighs> but no, this guy, Katakuri, has one thing that puts him above everyone else. And that's his observation hockey. Now, I didn't think observation hockey could do this. This is some very, very highly trained hockey seeing into the future now of course in one sense I got like a Jojo-esque vibe you know like when he predicts what the person's gonna say kind of felt like that but then Beige is like ooh nope he can see into the future so yeah Katakuri and Smoothie are the two remaining ones we're not sure if Cracker is back up and running yet but at the very least that hockey alone is the biggest threat to Beige's plans how will that affect them? I don't know. I want to see. Can't wait. And no break next week. So, the party is getting ready to start. We've got everybody in in line. Oh, so all we need is the Big Bang. There was actually no, no Straw Hat Pirates this time, now that I think about it. Except for the quick shot of uh, Sanji near the end. But aside from that, it's mainly just setting up who will be in attendance... Who the biggest, you know, obstacles will be. Who the biggest obstacle is. And how will that hockey, you know, ruin Beige's plans. And will the Sun Pirates actually get out of Dodge in time? So, tell me what you guys think down in the comments below about this chapter. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And 
follow all of my social media and I hope you guys who aren't new like the new style that I'm using I got a little upgrade on my shit so till next time peace <laughs>